So now uh, why Python industry is moving towards more and more into a Python centric environment because you know uh, Python is a very uh, multi uh, purpose language you can do a lot and lots of things using using Python and what I have also seen is that the learning curve in Python is comparatively shallow so you know I have seen that people com uh, complain that R is a difficult language but they say that uh, compared to R Python is easy so so I mean it depends but um, Python uh, the general perception is that it is easy to learn language the learning curve is relatively shallow and you can do mm, multiple things using Python so now um, uh, again Obviously, it's a high-level language. It's not a low-level assembly language. And um, high-level language is easy to learn. And it is definitely, uh, you know, the niche areas are machine learning, deep learning, um, big data. So I would say machine learning, deep learning, big data, Spark. These are all can be done very efficiently using Python. So I think that adds to its attraction. Um, so Google, uh, you know, the TensorFlow is the number one language in deep learning area is on Python. So and obviously it is open source, free to learn. So uh, people are companies are not willing to pay for licenses. There are more and more. I see the trend going towards the open source. So, you know, so it also adds to this uh, charm that it is free. And uh, here you can see it's, it's a spectrum ranking. So you can see um, maybe C, the language C has still 100, like um, can be used in many types of uh, development. But you see Python has come up into number rank three. And I think it's for web development and a desktop kind of application. So it's, it's really there. Uh, R is at the number of. Uh, uh, I mean five. So you know R has some limitations. I would say it's mostly it's still a darling. You know it's still a champion as far as statistical modeling concerned. But uh, Python has like web development and all these things are very very well developed. So uh, and why Python is so popular? The syntax is really you know very minimal uh, syntax. Uh, easy to set up, easy to debug, and a uh, number of syntax that you need to write to accomplish any task is very, very minimal. So uh, one of these things, and and uh, it's a, it has a clean, clean syntax, and uh, obviously an expansive library. So there are lots and lots of libraries, modules, those are already there. So you know you have uh, easy, uh, already uh, defined um, functions and all to accomplish any of the tasks that you might be interested and obviously it's an open source language i would say uh, uh, there are like millions of users who are using it so you know the getting the support is very very easy so you can use uh, forums like stack exchange and you know if you are facing any problem post a, uh, uh, post your query and you can get help like you know within an hour that's what my experience have been so there is a huge on, on, uh, online support that is also available and obviously as I have also mentioned before as a Google Google is a pioneer they are use Python and you know that also is this and is a number of applications Google uses Python including TensorFlow and um, so, uh, read up, so you know, there are uh, in the next two slides, there are a couple of points that we have mentioned why Python is um, so uh, attractive. The readability, it, it has a, you will see, you will, next uh, next four or five weeks, we will be working with Python. So you will see the uh, script is uh, very, very clean and clear. And there is a balance of high level, low, low level programming. So, you know, you can work with Python as a, in, in an interactive mode or, you know, interactive mode. Or if you have written a bunch of codes that then you can also do in a program mode as well. Um, uh, so there is a nice balance language interoperability. You can do with uh, many various other languages as well. So um, uh, incidentally, 
uh, there is a wiki uh, uh, article there uh, so interoperability with other languages so if you're interested how you can uh, you know exchange with other things other functions are written how can work with it just go to this uh, wiki page wiki.python.org uh, integrating python with other languages so you can see how you can get help for something probably you had written previously in other languages so how you can you know interact with those things so um, uh, documentation system, nice documentation system. It has hierarchical module system. We will see when we go, go into these uh, modules. Data structure, uh, Python, the main data structures, they are uh, list, tuple, uh, dictionary, and, uh, and could be set as well. We will see. Uh, 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 what we mean by list uh, tuple so this could be like you know collection of objects this could be and again this could be mutable or immutable mutable means you can change some of these objects you know the sequence of these objects you can, things can change sometimes things cannot change so mutable versus immutable list is uh, mutable but a tuple is immutable so we will see uh, what are all these data structures are uh, that then there are available libraries. There are lots and lots of uh, standard library pa uh, packaged with Python, massive, impressive libraries that are available for all kinds of uh, work. Some of them, you know, we will be uh, working with the most important libraries like uh, NumPy to work with your uh, arrays, how you can work with array and uh, uh, matrices. Then uh, you will be working with um, uh, SciPy for your scientific computation, um, uh, uh, Pandas, that is for your uh, working with the data frame, slicing, dicing data. That is the most important thing that you will be doing for you as a data scientist or as an analyst. That, you know, slicing, dicing, cleaning, operation. Uh, there is a missing value in the data, how you do that, clean that. So all these operations you can do using um, using some of the pandas. Then, obviously, your machine learning. That is the gist of everything. The machine learning, there is a library called uh, Scikit-learn. Scikit -learn. So, uh, so Scikit-learn, using that, there are lots and lots of functions that are available for uh, many, many, uh, you know, uh, machine learning algorithms, starting with linear regression, logistic regression, uh, uh, classification algorithms, uh, ensemble techniques, random forest, um, uh, bagging, boosting, and all sorts of things are available within uh, scikit-learn, sklearn. Other than that, you also have a testing framework available in Python if you're interested in that. But I think the mostly we will be interested in to data analytics. So we will be working with uh, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Scilab. And I, I think you also have some component of in, uh, natural language processing that we will be handling with NLTK natural language toolkit and you know natural language processing that means that you are working with text data nltk is has been the champion in this area and is for so so they are, so it's, it's really a champion in, in in case of natural language processing people use other languages c or something but they are not really optimized so um so these are kind of you know uh uh, the very positive things around the Python and that makes this language so so very attractive to use with it. Uh, and uh, so uh, and why it is and it, it is really you know imperative to know Python if you are getting into data science field this is this is my gut feeling that you have to learn Python um, I mean, five years back, probably to a SAS, but every company is now moving towards uh, Py, uh, R or Python, with Python now being the champion. Let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, what do businesses use Python for. So, you know, what are the things Python can be used for? So, uh, one of the things is the building the data pipelines. So, um, you know, Data pipelines, it is the business intelligence work that is the creating uh, earlier. It is to be called the uh, setting up the data warehouse, a DW. So, you know, uh, before uh, we can work as a data scientist on the data, on the data, so enterprise data needs to, uh, needs to be brought into 
right? So, so it's a data ingestion that needs to come, and there are processes that follows. It's called ETL, it, uh, extract, transform, and load. So uh, there are some packages. There are uh, dedicated programs that can do it, like Informatica. But you know, Python uh, can also be used very efficiently building the data pipelines. And and uh, with the big data coming in these days, we are talking about not the EDW setting up the EDW, but it's called the Hadoop data lakes, where you know we can uh, we can store and work with all sorts of data, be it a structured data, unstructured data, batch uh, also data could be at batch at rest or it could be real time data so so and again python is very very optimized into that second thing is obviously uh, is an analytics course a data science course so our focus would be uh, disc, uh, analytics so in the analytics phase uh, uh, descriptive analytics so you know um, so when we talk about analytics, there are a few uh, categories of analytics are there. So uh, it is usually called a DPP framework. So this framework is called descriptive, prescriptive, and sorry, descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. So whatever problems that we do in the analytics, they fall into either of these three categories. They could be either descriptive, predictive, or prescriptive. So what does it mean by descriptive? So descriptive is nothing but, you know, you have the data, so you are looking at the data, trying to find out, you know, what does this data represent? What does this data tells me? So it, it says like, what has happened? So these are the type of questions that you want to do. This is your descriptive analytics you want to do. So yes, of course, obviously, this is, uh, these skills are very much, very, very much in demand. Business always wants to know about the, their historical data, you know, what is happening or what has happened, who, who, what, what are my new marketing opportunities, who are, you know, who, 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 what uh, has been the uh, profile of my customers, who are my customers, I want to know about them, I want to know about their spending pattern, you know, I want to I want to see what they have spent in the in the, in the past on which of the categories. So these all all of these things that we can do uh, is called the descriptive analytics. Then thing comes. So these things have happened. So you know why this has happened. So why uh, why part is to understand why this has happened, why there has been a sudden dip in the past in the cells, or why there has been a sudden increase in the cells in the past. We need to do to understand the why part. We need to apply uh, some algorithm, you know, some algorithm, some types of uh, data analysis into that. So so that kind of thing is called uh, uh, is called predictive analytics when you are trying to predict something or we want to understand something that has happened with uh, analyze something that has happened in the recent past. So that type of analytics is called predictive analytics. And once you are done with predictive and descriptive part, you want to recommend to your business what the business should do. And that is kind of analytics we call predictive analytics. Uh, sorry, that is called prescriptive analytics. So you know, Python can be used for all of this uh, cycle for descriptive, uh, predictive, and uh, prescriptive analytics as well. Now comes your machine learning and data science part. So machine learning and data science part, as I had mentioned before, it comes into falls into the bucket of predictive analytics. So you know, we are trying to understand the why, or you know, can our customers be divided into the clusters? So uh, obviously, you know, I would like to. Uh, uh, target my customers, but you know, uh, it is not possible for me to create a, a marketing strategy for each and individual uh, customer. Instead of that, what I try to do is that I try to look for, you know, bigger groups, bigger clusters, so that I can target the, those cl the clusters. Now, what happens is in a cluster, all the customer in that cluster would be the similar in nature, but different from the other clusters. So, so, so you know, uh, we can do this. This is called your un, uh, this is called your clustering, and this is called your customer segmentation. This is very much used in marketing, um, a customer or customer analytics. So, uh, and these in the machine learning terminology, these also falls under what we call unsupervised machine learning. So, you know, 
we might have a discussion later in the course in the machine learning falls under uh, supervised uh, uh, machine learning algorithms and unsupervised machine learning algorithms. So, you know, we can do all of these things using Python and the, the library that we will be looking for uh, to work uh, on this is called the psychic learn, the SK learn. So we will SK learn or sci-fi. Sci-fi and SK learn would be our major workhorse for machine learning and data science. And this is really the cream of, you know, the cream layer of all. So, so this is, you know, machine learning and uh, data science. So, um, so working as an analyst, analyst data science, as you know, I had just mentioned uh, SAS. SAS, SAS it really was the, it, it is a market leader. Five years back, everything was in SAS. But there was a little ch a chunk of SPSS was also there. Stata, not that much. MATLAB was, uh, it's an engineering product. If you go to an engineering school or if you're an engineer, you, you have done MATLAB. But uh, SAS was really big, but, um, uh, but you know, I see that uh, it is coming up to be R and Python these days, the open. So there is, I see the paradigm shift from all of these, from SAS towards Python and R. Even then, I would say R is still R champion in statistics, statistical modeling, but uh, Python is more of an universal and multi-purpose. So uh, uh, Python can do both a developer's job as well as a statistician's job using, using SKLR. So, so, you know, it's coming, it is an emerging champion between R and Python. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, Please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.